What's up everyone, Ozzy here, and I teach you guys how to save money when building computers. Right now is clearly not the best time to build a computer. Prices have drastically increased because demand is so high and stock is so low. Well, I recently bought seven video cards, I hope, for a grand total of $45 before shipping. I'm hoping that we have some favor and we actually get something useful that could possibly counteract this high demand, low stock situation we're experiencing. So without any further ado, let's check it out. Before we do that, I want to thank the sponsor of this video, Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning community that teaches you new things ranging from creative topics to practical everyday tips. You get access to high quality lessons at an affordable price. You guys saw that simple yet crisp transition at the start, right? With the boxes and everything, you know? Well, I'm currently trying to up my filmmaking with eccentric yet simple transitions that don't take up a lot of resources. A guide that helps me do that is low budget filmmaking by Maddie Brown. This guy talks about cool things like mood setting music and intriguing compositions that will help take your filmmaking to the next level. It does go for a more indie look, but there are still really nice tips to help you think creatively, compose your content well, and use your limited resources to make something meaningful. If you guys are interested, definitely check out Skillshare. It's affordable at just under $10 a month, and the first 1,000 people to click the link that you see in the description will get a free trial of the Skillshare Premium membership. All right, let's go see what kind of video cards I actually got. So seven GPUs for $45. Ozzy, how exactly did you do this? Well, that's just the thing. I didn't really do anything, and I'll let you guys in on a little secret. Every year, Vision Tech has their mystery box holiday items, and there are four different versions, $5, $10, $20, and a $40 model. These mystery boxes have an assortment of items ranging from RAM to video cards, and the higher priced ones usually have higher quality items. I bought a $5 mystery box about four years ago, and I got myself a Radeon HD 3850, which wasn't a bad choice at the time. Over the years though, the mystery boxes have become less and less enticing. When I did it back in 2016, the highest price model was $20. You could only get a video card and the $20 model was guaranteed a entry level to mid-range card. Nowadays, the most expensive option is $40 and you're not even guaranteed a GPU. On top of that, all items are as is and there are no returns. So if the item you get doesn't work, you can't return it. If I'm being quite honest, I think Vision Tech is trying to clear stock before the year ends. And so they're selling all of their scraps as mystery boxes. It can feel like a scam if you think about it hard enough. And that's why I don't really think about it. Last week I ordered two $10 mystery boxes and five $5 mystery boxes, and I'm hoping for at least some half decent GPUs in a couple of these. Oh, this one's really heavy. Five device charging station, charge up to five smartphones and tablets at once. That's actually not that bad. What is this? <laughs> oh my gosh, Pitbull? Uh, not a video card, at least I don't, I don't see a PCIe slot or anything, so I'm, so not a video card. Oh, that's cool. It's an it's a M.2 expansion slot. Uh, still not a video card. We're getting closer though. It's not a video card, but it's actually not bad. <sighs> there we go. 256 megs of RAM. Imagine that. Cyberpunk? Two, oh, bro. What is this? I, I don't even know what this is. It, it doesn't look half, like I like this retro look. I really like this retro look. 
So let's do a little bit of research on these cards and see exactly what they were like when they dropped and what we can do with them. So we clearly did not get seven video cards like we hoped. Now I would argue that some of the stuff that we did get was better than a video card, but that's my prerogative. For the three cards that came, what exactly did we get? We have the Radeon X1300 XT, the Radeon X800 GT, and the regular Radeon X800. Now back then, these were not enthusiast cards. The 1300 XT sat around 100 USD in 2006, and the X800 cards were around 120 in 2005. That's $130 and $155 respectively today. It's like buying an RX 570 if prices were where they should be. Sometimes people will buy high-end cards that are a few generations old to save money without sacrificing too much performance. Now, even if you did want to do that, 2005 is just way too far back. So much has happened within the last 15 years that these cards just won't be compatible with any game that's come out in the last decade. On the plus side, you can easily make your money back by reselling these on eBay if that's your cup of tea. I know there's a lot of hype for popular AAA titles that have recently come out, but if we go back in time, you'll see that these cards are still capable for a lot of great games. So why don't we try that out? Back then, PC gaming and PC building was not like it was now, but that doesn't mean it was any less fun. 2004 to 2007 had some iconic titles that are still considered classics today. For example, Half-Life 2 came out in 2004 and is still considered one of the best PC games ever by year-end lists in 2020. What's a better way to test out these cards than to try some of the most popular games of that era? But first, we need to build a PC fitting for the occasion. That was quick, right? Took me like two seconds to build. I'm a comedian, I know. Now, I don't have much retro hardware on me right now, but I do have some leftover parts that would kind of fit within the time period, give or take a few years. We're rocking a Core 2 Duo, four gigs of DDR2 memory, a Dell OEM motherboard and Dell OEM power supply, and a 120 gig SSD. Now, four gigs of RAM and a 120 gig SSD were definitely enthusiasts to possibly supercomputer levels 15 years ago, but I figured I would add those in just for the sake of my own sanity to ensure everything is snappy. And for compatibility reasons, we're going to take a trip down memory lane and use Windows XP Service Pack 3. I started off with Half-Life 2, a classic game from 2004. At 1024 by 768, all three video cards played the game well above 60 FPS most of the time, with the X800 dipping below 60 in a few places. Now the weirdest part about this is the X800. According to reviews, it's slower than the X800 GT and the X1300 XT, yet it consistently outperforms the other two cards in every game I play. And you'll see more of this as time goes on. Next was Need for Speed Underground 2. At 1024 by 768, the 1300 XT barely stays above 30 FPS, while the X800 blows right past it, providing the best gameplay of the three cards. Once we up the resolution to 1280 by 1024, all three cards struggle to hit the 30 FPS mark. Now we have the legendary RPG, Fable The Lost Chapter. We see a similar story here. The X800 is noticeably faster than the other two cards, but all three cards are playable. It's a trend that continues at both resolutions. And just for fun, I threw the infamous Crisis into the mix. At 1024 by 768, all three cards stayed above 30 FPS for the most part, which is again good enough to play the game. If we push the resolution to 1280 by 1024, the X800 barely makes the cut while the other two cards consistently stay below 30 FPS in combat or when there's a light source close to the player. <sighs> there's a lot to unpack, so... Let's just dive right in. At the end of the day, we didn't get any modern video cards. That's not to say that it's not possible to do so through Vision Tech. There's some people who have reported getting RX 570s through the $20 and $40 mystery boxes. Non-modern video cards do not make the experience 
less fun per se, it was just different. I was still able to play some fabulous games with these cards despite them being older than some of you watching this video right now. Like I mentioned in the beginning of the video, current gaming machines are just not affordable. I mean a GTX 1050 Ti is selling at a higher price today than it was four years ago. The market will stabilize, but in the meantime, you could try your hand at some older games or even indie titles that you haven't tried out yet. The great thing about them is that they run on affordable hardware, like I showed you in this video, including old office computers or family PCs. That's not to say that I don't empathize with people who wanted to upgrade or build a computer and they just couldn't. I do understand it's not ideal, but you can still make the most of your situation by enjoying what you can with the resources that you have. Now in terms of these cards performances, I was not expecting the 1300 XT to perform as poorly as it did. Based on the reviews I read online, this should have definitely been the fastest card and the X800 was faster than the GT version. Not sure what's up with that. Honestly, I probably won't look much into it in the future because all three cards were good enough for retro gaming. Anyway, I do hope the PC market can catch a break soon. It just sucks that it happened around holiday season where most people are building, buying, or upgrading their systems. But that's it for this video, guys. If you guys liked it, then leave a like. If you loved it, share, subscribe, all that kind of stuff. You can follow me on all my socials at AllSucksHW on literally everything. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.